now, how can we learn more about our own menstrual cycles? The diary is organized so it begins with the first day of cycle is the first day of the period. And sometimes it's hard to know if your period is really there or not, but usually if there's any clear blood, and certainly if there's any blood plus cramping or some of the things you usually expect. And to keep us organized with the diary, we put in the day of the month here as well. So one of the reasons it's important to pay attention to menstrual cycles is that flow matters. In the whole world of women, well over half have had anemia because of iron deficiency, which means they've lost too much blood and not replaced it with their diet or food or something. And it's hard to know what's a, what's a normal amount of flow unless you can talk with your friends about it, right? And most of us don't. So, so in my work, I will run across women who say, oh yeah, I thought soaking 20 pads or tampons in a cycle was normal. That's, that's the way it always is for me. You mean that's not normal? That's too much? So we have here an actual count of how many soaked. That means, you know, it's pretty full. Doesn't mean absolutely full dripping or something, but pretty soaked, not, not just partly used. And if it's partly full, then you would consider it like half or a third or whatever but an actual count. And the, the, the lines here have to be two, two digits big because some women do have 10 or 12, 14 pads in a day, which is obviously too much. The whole first section of the diary, we record on a kind of a scale. It's not a, an absolute one, two, three, four scale that means that one and two and three and four are the same but it's your own assessment with, uh, for example, in terms of flow, uh, zero would be you didn't see any blood that day. Something you don't have to wear a pad or tampon for would be a spotting, which is one. A two would be sort of normal flow. Three is normal to heavy. And four means flooding, soaking through, having to wear two, you know, a tampon and a pad or something like that. We have both an objective count of how many soap pads and tampons and an assessment with the scale. The other thing that goes with flow for many women is cramps. And cramps are, are a little hard to understand sometimes. Some women will experience them predominantly as back pain and others as you know, a low achy feeling. Others, they're very severe with pain even going into the legs um, having to stay home from work or school or something mm -hmm. because they're severe. Again, zero means you didn't have it. One means it's extremely mild. Two, mild to moderate. Three, moderate. And four is very intense. The worst you can imagine kind of thing. Is there a place on the diary to put in when we have cramps in the middle of our cycle? My husband likes to likes to use this word because he learned it at first aid, the middle schmerz. Okay, it's the kind of thing you can write down in cramps section. Okay. Uh, middle schmerz is literally from the German means middle pain. And what it refers to is usually a discomfort, often sharp, on either yeah. side. It's different than cramps, which tend to be in the middle, um, which happens when that follicle has gotten big and there's a lake of fluid surrounding the egg. When that ruptures, it releases the fluid into the, the abdomen, and also so there's some blood vessels here that may rupture, so there's a little bit of blood as well. That causes the pain. So, um, unfortunately, there are other reasons for the odd crampy pain in our abdomen, so sure. only about 10% of women say they experience that. Okay. The next section has two parts about breasts. The breasts are extremely sensitive to these changing hormones in the menstrual cycle. And the breast size and the breast growth and the breast sensitivity are useful to tell us what's going on. 
At the present, we don't really understand well enough what different of the breast tenderness things are telling us. But what I do know for sure is that if you press the flat of your hand into the front of your breast, like that firmly and it hurts, that that means estrogen's high. Actually, a funny story, um, somebody I know very well once said to me, she said, you know, if my breast is sore, actually I think she said boobs, if my boobs are sore in the middle of the month, it's going to be a real bitch before my period. <laughs> because she'd recognized that there was an association between this high estrogen sign at the mid-cycle and how she felt premenstrually. These are the kinds of things that if you can predict for yourself what's going on, you feel a little less out of control, out of touch. The other part of the breast that's useful to know about is high up under the armpit. And it seems to be a quite different spot than what we learn from the front of the breast. It doesn't necessarily be sore at the time the front is sore, um, and it can be sore when the rest of the breast isn't tender. Um, usually it's the kind of thing you have to feel yourself. You have to actually touch yourself there to know whether it's tender or not. And if you don't touch yourself, you wouldn't perceive it. The next one is fluid retention, or bloating, and it can manifest as, you know, feeling puffy in the daytime, getting up at night to go to the washroom, um, feet that don't fit in your sandals at the end of a hot day, that kind of thing. So a change in the sense that the fluid you're hanging on to or the, the fluid in your body. Um, so again, one would be just minor and two, three, and four would become very severe. And this is to you, like to when you, you say is, the yeah. scale, so it's like fluid retention that is intense for me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's all your own perception. What day of the menstrual cycle in relationship to flow and, and the next flow do you think is the maximum amount of fluid retention for most women? I would say towards the end, like personally for me, that's when I experienced the most. In that last most, week, yeah. Okay. And maybe a little bit into the cycle, into the flow. Okay. I think so What's too. interesting is that we just did the analysis of um, the diaries from the ovulatory women, 66 ovulatory mm -hmm. women who kept diaries like this across a year, and found that the peak fluid retention was actually the day that flow started which is later than I would have guessed mm. without mm -hmm. the, the actual data.